Today we're going to be learning about dividing algebraic expressions using the laws of exponents. We're going to start off by looking at a law of exponents that we've already learned, and that is dividing powers with the same base. So this is what the law looks like. So we start off with a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n, which can also look like this, a to the power of m over a to the power of n, because remember division is the same as a fraction. And that is equal to a to the power of m minus n. So remember, when we are dividing powers with the same base, so our bases over here are both a, so they're the same, we subtract the exponents. So I've got a to the power of m minus n when I'm dividing a to the power of m by a to the power of n, or I have, I have a to the power of m over a to the power of n. So that's what our law looks like, and that's what we're going to be using for the examples we're going to be doing today. Okay, so here's the first example that we have for today. So we've got 25a to the power of 7, b to the power of 2, c to the power of 9, and that is over negative 10a to the power of 3, b to the power of 12, c to the power of 7. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do when we are simplifying an expression like this is let's have a look at our sign okay so i have got a positive divided by a negative so i know that i'm going to end up with a negative answer then i'm going to look at my numbers my coefficients i've got 25 at the top and i've got 10 at the bottom so what i'm going to do is i'm going to see if there is a common factor that can go into both of those numbers and divide by it so in this case the highest number that goes into both 25 and 10 is 5 so if i divide by 5 i get 5 at the top and i get 2 at the bottom so i divide the same thing into the top and the bottom then i'm going to look at each of my variables uh, with the same bases respectively. So first I've got a to the power of 7 and a to the power of 3. They both have a base of, of a. So now I'm going to use my rule which says that when I'm dividing powers with the same base I'm going to subtract the exponents. So I've got a to the power of 7 over a to the power of 3. 7 minus 3 is 4. And when I do that what I'm actually doing is I'm saying at the top a to the power of 7 divided by a to the power of 3 that gives me a to the power of 4. And at the bottom, if I divide a to the power of 3 by itself, because remember we always have to divide the same thing into the top and the bottom, so when I divide the bottom by a to the power of 3, it just cancels out and gives me 1. Anytime you divide something by itself, you get 1. Okay, so now let's have a look at our b's. Now the b's are interesting because here I've got a smaller exponent on the top and a bigger exponent on the bottom. So that means that I've got more b's on the bottom of the fraction than I have on the top of the fraction. So when I cancel out the b's on the top with b's on the bottom, I'm going to end up with b's left over on the bottom because that's where there are more of them. Okay, so when I take the b to the power of 2 and the b to the power of 12, I'm still going to subtract, but I need to subtract the smaller number from the bigger number. So I'm going to subtract over here b to the power of 2 minus 2 is b to the power of 0, which gives me 1, which is the same as I had over here. Remember, when you divide something by itself, you end up with 1. And then on the bottom, I have b to the power of 12 divided by b to the power of 2. So 12 minus 2 is 10. So at the bottom, I end up with b to the power of 10. And then my c's, I've got c to the power of 9 divided by c to the power of 7. So I've got 9 minus 7 is 2, so on the top when I cancel that out, I'm going to end up with c to the power of 2. And on the bottom, I'm going to get c to the power of 0, which is just 1. Okay, so now I can go and simplify all of this. So I'm going to just write down what I'm left with on the top and the bottom. Obviously, if I'm multiplying by 1, it doesn't make any difference. So when I have 5 times a to the power of 4 times 1 times c to the power of 2, I don't have to worry about that one. So that gives me 5, a to the power of 4, c to the power of 2, over 2 times 1, b to the power of 10, times 1. Okay, so those 1s over there again don't make any difference. If everything at the bottom was a 1, then I would just have over 1. But when it's a fraction, you don't have to write the 1 in the denominator. If everything on the top cancelled out and gave me 1, then I would have to write that, and I'll do examples like that with you still. Okay, so that's what we end up with for that example. So when we do it, again, remember, the first thing I did was I looked at my sign. I said, 
I have a positive divided by a negative, that gave me a negative answer. Then I have 25 and 10, I do my numbers, my coefficients next, and I find the, I simplify it by finding the highest common factor and dividing the top and the bottom. And then I go through my variables, doing each of the different letters together respectively. Okay, so now we're going to go and you're going to do a few of these for yourself. Okay, so I'm going to give you four minutes to work on these examples. Okay, so let's go through those questions and see how they went. So the first question, we start off with 10 to x to the power of 13, y to the power of 8, z to the power of 7, over 5 x to the power of 7, y cubed, z to the power of 6. So first I'm going to tackle my, exp my coefficients because there are no signs to worry about in this one. I don't have any negatives to worry about. So I've got over here 10 and 5. The highest common factor is 5. 5 goes into 10 twice, 
and 5 goes into 5 once. Okay, now I can go on to my variables. I'm going to go through each of the different variables that I've got over here. So the first, I'm going to look at my x's. So x to the power of 13 over x to the power of 7, my rule says when I'm dividing powers with the same base, so I have to subtract the exponents. So I'm going to have 13 minus 7. Remember, we always subtract the, the smallest exponent. So 13 minus 7 is x to the power of 6. And then I also have to divide by x to the power of 7 on the bottom because I have to do the same thing on the top and the bottom of the fraction. And that gives me x to the power of 7 divided by itself, which is 1. So it cancels out. Then I look at my y's. I've got y to the power of 8 over y to the power of 3. Okay, so first, the, bigger, the one with the bigger exponent is on the top again. So I've got 8 minus 3. That gives me 5. So y to the power of 5. And then on the bottom, it also cancels out giving me 1. And then I've got z to the power of 7 over z to the power of 6. 7 minus 6 is 1, so z to the power of 1, or just z. And again, it cancels out on the bottom. Right, so now I've got 2 x to the power of 6, y to the power of 5, z on the top. And the bottom, I just have 1 times 1 times 1 times 1. And when we multiply 1 all together like that, we just end up with 1. When you have a fraction with a denominator of 1, you don't need to write that denominator. You don't need to write it as a fraction at all. So I'm just going to write 2 x to the power of 6, y to the power of 5, z. Please be careful, that only applies when it's the denominator that is 1. We're still going to do an example where the numerator ends up as 1. But when the denominator is 1, it just you don't need to worry about writing it. Okay, so now I'm going to go on to question B. Now on this one, I have got a negative that I'm going to be worrying about. So I've got negative divided by positive, that gives me negative. So the first thing I'm going to do is write down my negative. Okay, then I've got 6 and 18. The highest number that goes into both of those is 6. 6 goes in there once and 6 goes in there three times. Now I'm going to go on to my variables. So I'm going to start off with my d's. Okay, so over here I've got d squared at the top and I don't have any d's at the bottom. So nothing is going to happen to it. It is going to stay as it is. Then I go on to my e's. I've got e to the power of 4 over e. Now, if you can't see an exponent, remember it's 1. So I'm going to say 4 minus 1. So that's going to be e to the power of 4 minus 1, which is 3. So e to the power of 3. And on the bottom, that is going to cancel out because I have e divided by e giving me 1. And then f squared divided by f, that is, again, an exponent of 1 over here. You can't see it, but it is still there. So I've got 2 minus 1, and that gives me 1. So that gives me f to the power of 1, or just f. And on the bottom, it cancels out again, giving me just 1. So now, what I end up with on the top of my fraction in my numerator, I've got 1 d squared e cubed f. Now, I don't need to write the 1 because when we have variables, we don't have to worry about writing a coefficient of 1. So I'm just going to write d squared e cubed f. And on the bottom, I do have something to write down, so I will be writing this as a fraction. So this is going to be d squared e cubed f all over and on the bottom I've got 3 times 1 times 1 which is just 3. So that's what you should get for question B. Question C we've got a negative divided by a negative. So the first thing I need to do is make sure that I know that those two negatives basically cancel each other out. Okay so a negative divided by a negative gives me a positive answer. Then I've got 12 divided by 2. The highest number that goes into both of those is 2. So 2 goes in there 6 times, 2 goes in there once. Then I'm going to go on to my a's. Now I've got a squared over a cubed. Now in this case, I've got more a's in the denominator, in the bottom of my fraction, than I have in the numerator, which means that my leftover a's are going to be in the denominator and the a's on the top are going to all cancel out. So I've got a squared divided by a squared giving me 1 and the bottom I've got a cubed divided by a squared giving me a. Then I go on to my b's. b cubed and b to the power of 5. Now over here again I've got more b's on the bottom of my fraction than I have on the top of my fraction which means that when I simplify it I'm going to end up with b's in the bottom of my fraction. So b cubed divided by b cubed is 1. b to the power of 5 divided by b cubed is b to the power of 2. 
and then I go into my C's and the same thing is happening again. I've got more in the denominator than I have in the numerator. So I'm going to divide by C to the power of 6 at the top and the bottom and that gives me 1 at the top and at the bottom I get C to the power of 4. Remember whenever we are simplifying fractions we have to divide by the same thing on the top and the bottom of the fraction. Okay, so now I'm going to simplify that and write down what it all equals. So in the uh, numerator I've got 6 times 1 times 1 times 1 so that just gives me 6 and in my denominator I've got 1 times a b squared c to the power of 4 again just like in the previous question I don't have to worry about the 1 because I've got variables so I just am going to write down this variable so I've got a b squared c to the power of 4 and that is the denominator of my fraction where the numerator is 6 and remember it was positive because I had a negative divided by negative. Okay, so that's what we should have got for question C. Now let's have a look at question D. So in question D, I've got 5 p to the power of 4 q to the power of 8 r to the power of 6 over negative 7 p to the power of 4 q to the power of 6 r to the power of 10. So I'm going to start off by saying I know that I've got a positive divided by negative. That is going to give me a negative. Okay, so that's the first thing I can always do is identify that is a positive or a negative. Then I'm going to go onto my uh, numbers, my coefficients. So I've got 5 divided by 7. I can't simplify that. There is no common factor for those two numbers. So it's just going to stay 5 over 7. And then I'm going to go onto my p's. So I've got p to the power of 4 over p to the power of 4. Now when you've got exactly the same in the numerator and the denominator, if we divide something by itself we always end up with one so these are going to just cancel out and if we use our law you'll end up with p to the power of zero which gives you one so that helps you also to know that you will end up with one when those cancel out now let's go on to our q's now on this one i've got more q's in the numerator than i have in the denominator so i'm going to end up with q's left in the numerator so i'm going to have q to the power of eight and i'm dividing by q to the power of 6, and that gives me q to the power of 2, because I subtract 8 minus 6. And then in the denominator, I have q to the power of 6 divided by itself, and that gives me 1. And then over here, I've got r to the power of 6 over r to the power of 10. Now in this one, I've got more r's in the denominator, so that gives me, this cancels, and this gives me r to the power of 4. So I end up with negative 5 times 1 times q squared times 1 is 5. And in the denominator, I've got 7 times 1 times 1 times r to the power of 4 is 7r. Sorry, that was 5q to the power of 2. And this is 7r to the power of 4. And that is what you should get for question D. Then question E, we've got, again, a negative divided by a positive. So that gives me a negative. Then I'm going to simplify my numbers, my coefficients. So I've got 18 and 9. 9 goes in there once, 9 goes in there twice. Then I go to my x's. I've got x to the power of 9 over x to the power of 8. That cancels, giving me 1, and that gives me x to the power of 1, or just x. Over here, I've got y to the power of 10 and y to the power of 3. That cancels, and this gives me y to the power of 10 minus 3 is 7. And then z to the power of 2 and z to the power of 1, again, that cancels. And that gives me z to the power of 1, or just z. Now, in this case, just like I had in the first question, everything in the denominator has cancelled out, giving me 1. So I don't have to write that. So I get 2x, y to the power of 7, z. So that's what you should get for question E. Now, question F, you may have noticed, looks very similar to question E to what question E did, but it's the opposite way around. So let's see how it differs when we actually calculate it. So just like in this one, here we had a negative divided by positive, here we have a positive divided by negative, it's going to give us a negative answer. Okay, now I'm going to go and do all my cancelling. So 9 goes in there once, 9 goes in there twice. x to the power of 8 cancels, x to the power of 8, or x to the power of 9 divided by x to the power of 8 gives me x y cubed cancels y to the power of 10 divided by y to the power of 3 is y to the power of 7 and then z cancels and z to the power of 2 divided by z to the power of 1 is z so that's what you should get for that but now 
I have got 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 giving me 1 in my numerator. So what happens when you end up with a fraction where we have 1 in the numerator? We have to write it. We can't leave that out. It's not the same as when we have 1 in the denominator where we can leave it out. If it's in the numerator, we have to write it. Okay, so then I have 1 over, in the denominator, I end up with 2x, y to the power of 7, z. So that's what you should get for question F. Okay, so now we're going to go on to another example. Now in this example, we have negative 2, b to the power of 5, c to the power of 6, times 3a to the power of 10b, and that is all over Two a b to the power of seven c to the power of six times negative seven a to the power of five c to the power of six. Okay, so now we have more than one thing in the numerator and in the denominator to worry about when we're cancelling. Now there are two ways that we can go about this. We can first either simplify the numerator and the denominator and then just do it the way we did the previous questions, or we can start cancelling straight away. Okay, so I'm going to show you both. So first. I'm going to show you the, the way where we simplify the numerator and the denominator first. So I've got uh, in my numerator over here, negative times a positive is negative. Then I've got 2 times 3 is 6. Then I've got a to the power of 10. b to the power of 5 times b is b to the power of 6. And then I've got c to the power of 6 over a positive times a negative is also negative. 2 times 7 is 14, 8 times a to the power of 5 is a to the power of 6, b to the power of 7 stays as it is, and then c to the power of 6 times c to the power of 6 is c to the power of 12. And now I'm going to go and simplify those, just like we did with the previous questions. So I've got a, pos a negative divided by negative is positive. Then over here, my highest common factor that goes into 6 and 14 is 2. That gives me 3 and 7 when I divide by 2. Then I'm going to divide my a's, that gives me a to the power of 4 over 1. Then I've got b to the power of or just 1 at the top and b to the power of 1 or b at the bottom. And my c's, I've got c to the power of 6 over c to the power of 12. The c to the power of 6 cancels on the top and that gives me c to the power of 6 on the bottom. So you should end up for this question with positive 3a to the power of 4 over 7b c to the power of 6. Okay, so now let's have a look at the other way of doing it, and that is to simplify straight away. Okay, so I'm going to do that over here. So I start with negative 2 b to the power of 5 c to the power of 6 times 3 a to the power of 10 b. over 2a b to the power of 7 c to the power of 6 times negative 7 a to the power of 5 c to the power of 6. Okay, so now what I can do is I can go and cancel any a's with any b's or any a's with any a's, any b's with any b's, any c's with any c's, so long as I'm cancelling top and bottom. I can't cancel bottom and bottom. I can't cancel top and top. Okay, so I can do this. I can say First, let's have a look at our numbers. Okay, so I've got a negative at the top and a negative at the bottom. When I divide by negative, a negative by a negative, they cancel or they give me a positive. If I have two and two, those can cancel each other out straight away. Then over here, the three and the seven, I can't do anything with. So I'm done with my numbers. Let's have a look at my variables. Let's first look at the a's. I've got a over here and I've got a to the power of 10 over there. So I can cancel this a with the a to the power of 10. That gives me 1, and that gives me a to the power of 9. Then I still have an a to the power of 5 over here, so I can cancel the a to the power of 9 with the a to the power of 5. That gives me a to the power of 4, and that cancels out, giving me 1. So out of all of my a's, I ended up with an a to the power of 4 over there. Now let's have a look at our b's. I've got b to the power of 5 over here, and b to the power of 7 over here. So I'm going to cancel those, and that gives me b to the power of 2 and 1 over there. 
And then this view over here, I can cancel out with a b to the power of 2 over there. That gives me 1, and this gives me b. Then I've got c to the power of 6 and c to the power of 6. Now those can just cancel out completely, give me 1 and 1. And then I've got no c's over there, and I've got a c to the power of 6 over here. So now what I'm left with, when I simplify all of this, my negatives cancelled, and I've got 1 times 1 times 1 times 3 times a to the power of 4 times 1. So that all gave me 3 a to the power of 4. And in my denominator, I've got 1 times 1 times b times 1 times 7 times c to the power of 6. So I've got 7 b c to the power of 6. Remember, we do our coefficient first, then we do our variables in alphabetical order. And that's what we should get for that question. Now, if you look at the two different ways that we did it, we end up with the same answer. Okay, now this way is a little bit quicker. Take you have to do less writing, but if it is more, com it is a bit more complicated. So if you are not comfortable with it, do this method first until you get more comfortable, and then you can start trying that. Okay, so now you're going to do a few for yourself, and I'm going to give you four minutes to work on these examples.
Okay, so let's see how those questions went. So the first one we had was negative 9 x to the 4 y to the 3 z to the 6 times negative 3 x to the 6 y to the 2 z to the 10 all over negative 12 x to the y x to the 9 y to the 10 z to the 3 times 6 y to the 3 z to the 2. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to, for this example, I'm going to do it the first method where we're going to simplify the numerator and then simplify everything. Okay, so now in the numerator, I've got a negative times a negative is positive, and then 9 times 3 is 27. Then I've got x to the power of 4 times x to the power of 6 is x to the power of 10, y cubed times y squared is y to the power of 5, and z to the power of 6 times z to the power of 10 is z to the power of 16. Then in my new in my denominator, I've got negative 12 times 6 is 72, x to the power of 9. Then y to the power of 10 times y cubed is y to the power of 13. And z cubed times z squared is z to the power of 5. So now I'm going to go and simplify that. Okay, so first. We can divide by 9. 9 goes into 27 3 times. And 9 goes into 72 8 times. Okay. Then I'm going to take my x's. And I've got x to the power of 10 divided by x to the power of 9. That gives me x in the numerator and the x to the power of 9 in the denominator cancels. Then I've got my y's. I've got y to the power of 5 over y to the power of 13. The y to the power of 5 cancels, and the denominator I end up with y to the power of 13 minus 5, which is 8. Then I've got z to the power of 16 over z to the power of 5. That gives me z to the power of 11 over 1. Okay, so I end up with negative 3x times 1 times z to the power of 11. So that's 3xz to the power of 11 over 8y to the power of 8. So that's what you should get for question A. Now let's have a look at question B. Okay, in question B, again, I will do it the method of simplifying the top and the bottom first. So if I simplify the top, I get 6 times 2 is 12 d to the power of 7 times d to the power of 8 is d to the power of 15. Then I've got e to the power of 10 times e to the power of 5 is e to the power of 15. And f to the power of 2 times f to the power of 7 is f to the power of 9. Over. In my denominator, I've got a negative times a positive, so it's negative. 2 times 8 is 16. And then I've got d to the power of 7 times d to the power of 9 is d to the power of 16. E to, e to the power of 3 times e to the power of 4 is e to the power of 7, and f to the power of 1 times f to the power of 10 is f to the power of 11. Okay, so now I'm going to go and simplify those. I've got a positive divided by negative, that gives me a negative. 4 goes in there 3 times, and 4 goes in there 4 times. Then I've got d to the power of 15 over d to the power of 16, that cancels, and this gives me d. Here I've got e to the power of 15 and e to the power of 7, this, this cancels in the denominator, and that gives me e to the power of 8 in my numerator. And then my f's, I get 1 in the, in the numerator, it cancels, and the denominator I have f to the power of 2. So now what I'm left with in my numerator is 3 e to the power of 8. And in my denominator, I have 4 d f squared. So that's what you should have got for question B. Now let's have a look at question C. So in this one, I'm going to do it the second method, where I'm going to go straight ahead and start cancelling things out. Okay, so in this case, I can cancel out straight away. I've got 2 over here that can cancel with the with 2 in the, eight, in the 8, giving me 4. Then over here, I have got 4 and 6 can simplify, giving me 2 and 3. I can't do anything with the 3 and the 5 and the 2 that are left now. Now we can go on to our 
Oh, also, I've got a negative there and a negative there. They can cancel each other out. Okay. Then I've got p to the power of 8 over p to the power of 6. I can simplify that. This cancels, and this gives me p to the power of 2. Then over here, I've got p and p to the power of 2. So that can cancel, giving me p and 1. Okay. I could also have cancelled the p with the p to the power of 5 instead, or the p to the power of 6 instead, and, given, and ended up with p to the power of 5. Either way, it'll give me the same answer in the end. Then I've got my q's. q to the power of 3 and q to the power of 10. That can simplify. And this gives me q to the power of 7. Then over here, I've got q to the power of 8 and q to the power of 8. Those cancel completely, so I can just simplify that like that. And I have nothing else to do with the, with the q's. Now I can go on to the r's. So I've got r to the power of 3 and r to the power of 6. This can cancel over here giving me 1, and this gives me r to the power of 3. Now, I want you to take note over here. I've got a p left over there, and I've got p to the power of 6 over there. I can't do anything with those because they are both in the numerator. I can't cancel them out. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to end up multiplying them together because they're both in the numerator. Okay, so now we're going to go and simplify. So my negatives cancel, so it's positive. And then I have over here 1 times p times 1 times 3 times p to the power of 6 times 1 times 1. So my coefficient is going to be 3. And then I go on to my variables, and I've got p times p to the power of 6 is p to the power of 7. And the q and the r all cancelled in the numerator. In my denominator, I've got a 2 over here times a 5, which gives me 10. And then I have q to the power of 7 and r cubed. So that's what you should have got for question C. And then the last question, question D. Now this one is a little bit more complicated because we have got this to worry about over here. So the very first thing I'm going to do before I even think about simplifying anything with multiplication or division is I have to go and sort out that exponent that those brackets over there okay so i'm going to leave everything else as it is for now i'm just going to copy it down and then i'm going to simplify this over here so i've got 25 because it's 5 squared and then a to the power of 4 squared now remember our rule where we are Raising a power to a power is we must multiply the exponents. So over here I've got 4 times 2 is 8. So a to the power of 8 and then c to the power of 7 squared is c to the power of 7 times 2 is 14. Okay, then I multiply that by negative 6 a to the power of 10 b c to the power of 5. Okay, now once we've got our fraction like this, we can then just go and simplify it like we are used to doing. Okay, so now I'm going to go and, just like I did in the previous question, I will start cancelling out straight away. Okay, so over here I'm going to cancel out these two negatives. But you can see that that one over there hasn't been cancelled and there's no other negatives to cancel with it. So I'm going to have a negative answer. I know that already. Then 5 and 25 can cancel. That gives me 1 and 5. And over here, I've got 6 and 10 can simplify. So that gives me 3 and 5 because 2 goes into both of those. And then over here, the 5s can cancel out, giving me 1 and 1. Okay, so now I've done my coefficients. There's nothing else I can do with those. Now I'm going to go on to my variables in alphabetical order. So let's go through the a's first. a squared and a to the power of 8. And here I've got a and a to the power of 10. Okay, so I'm going to simplify this first. a squared and a to the power of 8. That gives me 1 and a to the power of 6. And over here, I've got a and a to the power of 10. That gives me 1 and a to the power of 9. Okay, then I'm going to go on to my b's. I've got b squared over there, and I've got b squared over there. There's no b here, but there's a b here. So I'm going to simplify these over here. b squared and b, that gives me b and 1. Now, I can't do anything with that one. I will simplify it with a b later when I'm multiplying. 
And then I'm going to go on to my C's. So I've got C to the power of 10, C to the power of 14, C to the power of 3, and C to the power of 5. So, just, just, so I'm just going to go and simplify everything that I can. So I've got C to the power of 10 and C to the power of 14. That gives me 1 at the top and C to the power of 4 at the bottom. Over here, I'm going to simplify the C to the power of 3 and C to the power of 5. And that gives me 1 and C squared. I can't simplify those because they're both in the denominator. Okay, so now I've only got B's in my numerator. There are no B's in the denominator. I have only got A's in the denominator. There are no A's left in the numerator. And I've only got C's in the denominator and I've, there are no C's left in the numerator. So now that means that I've finished with all my cancelling. So I can go and I can simplify it to the end now. So now in my numerator I have got... 1 times 1 times b squared times 1 times 1 times 1 times b times 1. So basically, I just have b squared times b, and that gives me b cubed. In my denominator, I've got a bit more. So I've got 1 times a to the 6 times c to the 4 times 3 times a to the 9 times 1 times c squared. So first, I've got my 3. Then my a's, so I've got a to the power of 6 times a to the power of 9. That gives me a to the power of 15. And then c to the power of 4 times c to the power of 2 is c to the power of 6. So that's what we should get for question D. Okay, now we're going to go to the last example that I'm going to be doing with you like this. And that is this one over here where we've got brackets to worry about. So I have got 10 a to the power of 5 c cubed over negative 6 a cubed, b to the power of 4, c cubed. And that is all to the power of 3. Now, when you get something like this, the first thing you should do is simplify what's inside the brackets because it's going to make it easier for you then to simplify the exponent outside the brackets. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify inside the brackets by doing my cancelling like I normally have been doing up until this point. So I'm going to have a negative. I can't cancel that out. Then I've got 10 over 6, 2 goes in there 5 times, 2 goes in there 3 times. Over here I've got a to the power of 5 over a cubed, that simplifies to gives me a squared and that gives me 1 at the bottom of there. The b I can't cancel because there's no b's at the top and then I can cancel out the c cubed completely and that just gives me 1 and 1. Okay so now what I end up with is in my numerator I have 5a squared and in my denominator, I have 3, b to the power of 4, and all of it is negative. And then that is all being cubed. Now that I've got to this stage, I can now go and apply this exponent that is outside the brackets like that, this cube. Now remember, when we have a negative, which is being cubed, then because this exponent is an odd number, it means that the negative is going to stay negative. Remember, when you have a negative to the power of an odd number, it stays negative. When you have a negative to the power of an even number, it becomes positive. But in this case, the exponent is odd, so it's going to stay negative. And then I need to go and use that cube and apply it to everything inside here. I need to apply it to the things in the top and to the things in the bottom the numerator and the denominator. Now remember when we have got a number to the power of 3, then we apply that exponent to the number. But remember, the number has its own little exponent that you can't see. So our rule is when we uh, raise a power to a power, we multiply the exponents together. So I'm going to multiply the, the 1 by 3, and that gives me 5 to the power of 3. And then over here, I've got 8 squared to the power of 3 is 8 to the power of 6 over. Same thing happens with the 3 at the bottom over here. I've got an exponent of 1, so it's going to be 1 times 3, so that gives me 3 cubed over b to the power of 4 times 3 is 12. And now we need to go and simplify those exponents because I can simplify those. Okay, so that gives me. 5 cubed is 125. a to the power of 6 over 3 cubed, which is 27, b to the power of 12. And that's what you should get for that example.
There we go. So it's 120, negative 125a to the power of 6 over 27b to the power of 12. Okay, so now I'm going to give you a few that you're going to do for yourself. And I'm going to give you four minutes again to work on these questions. Okay, so let's see how those questions went. So the first one we had in brackets, negative eight y to the power of seven z cubed over 10 x to the power of nine z to the power of seven, all closed, all, all in the brackets to the power of two. Okay, so first I'm going to simplify what's inside those brackets. Now I already know that I've got a negative divided by positive that gives me negative. Then I'm going to simplify my coefficients. So I'm going to have eight and 10, that gives me four and five. Then 
the y I can't do anything with and the x I can't do anything with. But the z, I've got z cubed times z to the power of 7 and that gives me z to the power of 4 in the denominator and the z cubed cancels. So what I end up with inside my brackets is negative 4y to the power of 7 over 5x to the power of 9 z to the power of 4 and that is all squared. So now we're going to go and apply this exponent outside over here. Now remember when we have a negative inside we have to see if this is if this is odd or even. In this case it's an even exponent which means that that is going to become positive so I'm not going to write a minus over here. Then I've got 4 which is to the power of 1. You can't see the 1 but it's there so I'm going to be multiplying 1 by 2 and that gives me 2. So it's 4 to the power of 2 and then y to the power of 7 times 2 is 14 over 5 also has a power or an exponent of 1 and so I'm going to multiply 1 by 2 and that gives me 2 so it's 5 to the power of 2 x to the power of 9 or 9 times 2 is 18 and z to the power of 8 and now I can go and simplify my numbers like that over there. So I've got 4 squared is 16 y to the power of 14 over 5 squared is 25 x to the power of 18 z to the power of 8. That's what you should have got for question A. Then question B. Very similar to question A, we first need to go and simplify what's inside the brackets. I can see that I've got a positive divided by negative. So again, I'm going to have a negative inside my brackets over there. I can simplify my 2 and my 6. That gives me 1 and 3. Then I've got d to the power of 9 and d to the power of 5. This cancels and that gives me d to the power of 4 in the numerator. I have e only in the numerator, so I can't simplify it. And then f to the power of 8 over f to the power of 10, that cancels, and this gives me f to the power of 2. Okay, so now I have in my numerator just d to the power of 4, e to the power of 4. There's no f there. And then in my denominator, I have got 3f squared. And that is all being cubed. Okay, and remember it was negative because I had a positive divided by negative. Now I'm going to raise it to the power of 3. Now when I've got a negative with an odd exponent like this, I need to keep the negative. Then I am going to do my numerator. So I've got d to the power of 4 to the power of 3. I multiply my exponents. So that gives me d to the power of 12. Then e to the power of 4 cubed is e to the power of 12 over, then over here I've got 3f squared, so this is to the power of 1, so 1 times 3 is 3 to the power of 3, which is going to give me 27, and f squared becomes f to the power of 6, okay, and that gives me negative d to the power of 12, e to the power of 12, over 27, f to the power of 6. Now remember you can go straight from here to there skipping out the step where you write 3 to the power of 3. Same thing over here. You could have gone straight from there to there. So long as you remember that you're not multiplying the number by the exponent outside, you're multiplying its exponent by the exponent outside and then you have to simplify what you end up with. So I can say 3 to the power of 1 cubed is 3 cubed and then write down 27. So you can do that so long as you remember that you're not multiplying the number by the exponent. It's not the same as where you have variables and you're multiplying their exponents by this exponent outside. Even though you can't see an exponent here, it still has one and it is 1 and you multiply that 1 by the exponent outside and then you apply it to the number that you've got over here. Okay, so I could have skipped out that step over there. Then the last one, we've got question C over here. Now, just like I had um, 
earlier, I've got it, a set of brackets over here that I need to sort out first. Okay, so before I even worry about simplify what's inside here, before I can do that, I first have to do these brackets over there. Okay, so first, let's go and write everything else down as it is. We're not going to be touching it yet. Okay, so over here, I've got a negative, which is being squared, so that becomes positive. And then I have 5 squared is 25. Then I've got P squared, Q to the power of 4, R to the power of 6, by multiplying each of those exponents by 2, times 4, P to the power of 4, Q, R to the power of 9. That stays as it is. Or P to the power of 8, Q, R to the power of 9. And that is all to the power of 5. Okay, so now my next step is I need to go and simplify what's inside the brackets. Okay, I'm going to do this by just cancelling first. Okay, so I'm going to say, well, 25 over here has got 5. When I divide by 5, I, I, end, I, leave, I end up with 5. And so I have over here 2 left over. So I divided, by the 10, I divided the 10 and the 25 both by 5, and I got 2 and 5. Over here, I can now simplify this 5 and that 5. They cancel out completely. I can also simplify this 2 and the 4, and that cancels, and this gives me 2 over there. Also, take note, when you have a negative times a negative, I will end up with a positive as well. So I can even cross those out, even though I'm not actually cancelling them in the same way as I do when they're top and bottom. Okay. I'm going to go on to my P's now. So I've got a P over there, and it can cancel. And then I can simplify it with this P to the power of 8, or with P squared over there, it doesn't really matter. But I'll do the P to the power of 8, that gives me P to the power of 7. Okay, then I've got over here, Q squared and Q to the power of 4. This can simplify, or cancel, and this gives me Q to the power of 2. Then over here, I've got Q to the power of 10, and q to the power of 2 cancels with the q to the power of 10, and this gives me q to the power of 8 over there. Then I still have a q over here, which I can cancel. So that gives me 1, and this cancels again, giving me q to the power of 7, or simplifies again, giving me q to the power, q to the power of 7. Now I can go on to my r's. I've got r to the power of 5 over r to the power of 6. This simplifies, that gives me r. Over here, I've got r to the power of 4 and r to the power of 9. That cancels and this gives me r to the power of 5. And I have no more r's in the, in the numerator, so I can, I'm done with my r's. So now let's go and see what we're left with from everything that was in this fraction. Okay, so I've got negative times negative is positive. Then I've got 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times q to the power of 7 times 1. Everything else has cancelled out. So I've got positive q to the power of 7. In my denominator, I've got 1 times p squared times 1 times r times 2 times p to the power of 7 times 1 times r to the power of 5. So let's first do the 1 times 1 times 2 times 1. That all gives me 2. Then we're going to do our p's. I've got p squared times p to the power of 7 is p to the power of 9. And then I've got r times r to the power of 6, or r to the power of 5 is r to the power of 6. And all of that is the power of 5. Okay, so now I can simplify and apply this exponent outside here. So I've got q to the power of 7 to the power of 5 is q to the power of 35 over 2 to the power of 1 to the power of 5 gives me 2 to the power of 5. 2 to the power of 5 is 32. Then p to the power of 9 to the power of 5 is p to the power of 45. And, p to the power, and r to the power of 6 to the power of 5 is r to the power of 30. So that's what you should have got for question C. And that is how you simplify, how you do, and that is how you divide algebraic expressions using the laws of exponents. 
Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.